Okay. So now let's. We have analyzed last time that when we are solving an a PDE using finite difference, it doesn't really matter if the solution is uh, if the PDE is linear or nonlinear. And we specifically introduced the Burgers equation, whose big U is actually equal to what small U, right? So so that means the wave speed is no longer constant. It actually depends on the solution. So now we have to say dot product because big U is no longer a constant. But otherwise, we don't need to really change anything. Okay, so now let's see how does this solution look like. So before we go into uh, evaluation its accuracy, we, we can no longer evaluate its accuracy because we no, don't know its analytical solution. So let's just uh, take a look at uh, what the solution is like. So let's just uh, copy a few lines n is equal to 100. Let's always start with that. We are also going to start with the cosine initial condition and we solved it. So let's now plot x and u and our final solution at t equal to 1. This is what our solution now look like. All right. Pretty interesting, huh? So what happens? We initially had a sinusoidal wave. So let's actually plot the first solution, which is the red curve, right? And we somehow got to the blue solution. What actually is happening? Well, to, uh -huh, do you have a guess? So the, the points that are higher in magnitude are traveling faster than the points that are negative are traveling the other way. Right. The, the u now yeah changes sign in different parts of the solution, right? Okay. The, the ones that are up there initially had a positive u. Over here, the red, the, the solution has a negative u. So what is the behavior of u? Positive u, the wave moves towards the right. The negative u, the wave moves towards the left. And what happens? They come into they, they kind of form a the uh, the initially gentle slope becomes steeper and steeper, right? And the steeper slope gets dissipated by the viscous term. So so let's actually plot uh, the entire U history to see what actually happens. It's a little bit difficult to see, but like you can see, initially you have this. Uh, uh, cosine curve that goes down like this and you can start to see that the, the, the negative ones they start to travel towards that direction right at the same time the uh, the the wave gets dissipated by the dissipated term and uh, basically you are moving towards each other forming this steep slope which gets more and more dissipated by the dissipated term and that actually uh, is a little bit uh, resembling what happens in an aerodynamic shock wave. In a shock wave, what happens is that upstream of the shock wave, the flow is uh, supersonic or subsonic? Supersonic. supersonic, right. Downstream of the shock wave, the flow is subsonic. Okay, so I'm talking about if you choose a frame of reference that that's, that travels with the shock wave, right? When the shock wave is actually stationary, then upstream of the shock wave, the flow is supersonic, downstream is subsonic. So, so upstream of the shock wave, every characteristics travels downstream, right? But downstream, there is one characteristic that is the, the sound wave going upstream that is actually traveling upstream. So it's, it's similar to this case where on one side, the wave speed goes that way, on the other side the wave goes that way, so the two waves kind of collide, forming a, a shock wave. So here, let's decrease the amount of viscosity to see what happens. Uh, where is my code? So let's say 0.01 to see what happens. Okay, close. I'm going to say t of this. I solve this again unable to meet the tolerance okay so let's let's plot x u and 
to see what happens. Oops. I get a not a solution, right? So that's a uh, let's actually uh, solve this for a little bit shorter time. That still works. Actually, I think it solves all the way to 10 to the minus uh, 3. So let's plot uh, after a small one. Well, it seems that is already starting to blow up. So let's solve it for even a short amount of time to see what happens. Oh, well. So so basically what we see is that uh, it seems to be uh, at point 1. Okay, so point 1 still works, right? B because the... Uh, the, the waves still are not becoming steep enough and uh, once we go to point one five, does that still work? well that still works right you, you can see that uh, the waves are still magnitude 1 and minus 1 but it becomes steeper and steeper over here it's almost uh, uh, a straight down almost uh, a, a discontinuity and uh, let's see one seven, does it work? Uh, Okay, so here actually a true seems to be a true discontinuity formed. Let's see. Uh, oh, that's not what I want. I want dot dash. Yeah, uh, a tr almost true discontinuity formed. There is only a single point over here, and uh, you can see oscillation starts to form now. So this is when finite difference starts to fail, right? It's like the the error in the finite difference approximation goes like d. A third order derivative of u, right? And uh, what's the third order derivative at that point? I mean, no one knows. Probably infinity. So, so you can see, like, once we go to uh, even point two, oscillations starts to happen like that. And uh, when we went all the way to, I think, uh, point three, it's uh, it's no longer. It's it's basically becoming larger and larger, and eventually, when we went to one, uh, the the solver completely diverged. All right. So so basically, the um, lesson here is that finite difference scheme would work if the thickness of the shock wave. I mean, it, it worked in the previous case when our kappa is uh, is point oh one, right? In that case, the thickness of the shock wave is actually thicker than the grid spacing uh, then finite difference would actually work because you still have a smooth function for in, in real aerodynamics the thickness of the shock waves are usually pretty small like uh, um, micrometer sometimes nanometers and it's usually impossible to have a grid that small right if you if you just uh, do the numbers the speed of sound the viscosity of air and uh, uh, usually the the yeah um, the, the density of air if you do the do the numbers you're gonna find out it's really impossible to resolve the shock wave using grids so so for all practical purposes we can't really use finite difference schemes to solve equations with shock waves.